Greetings, nerds. This is Seen and Nerd. I'm your host, Sarah Belmont, and with me, as always, is our Mr. Producer, Will Polk. How are you doing tonight, Will? Doing very well, Sarah. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. You know what? Yeah. This week, I have pretty much been staying on top of SEN and the Schmodown of all Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've been keep, you know, I've gotten back into the Schmodown as well. Uh, really? I have. I have. I, a few... I have I haven't watched the late this week's rounds yet, but I, I did just listen to SEN and then of course Roca's own channel and, and Roxy and, and and also Winston on uh Blurs in the Hood. So yeah, mm-hmm. between you know, so yeah, I've been following all the Schmodown characters on their own individual projects and then and then hearing some of the discussions and stuff, I'm like, Oh, I need to get back into it. So of course, you know, it's all Kalinowski. Kalinowski losing and uh, spoiler alert and, yeah. and, and Roka going down, but uh, yeah, it, it's I, I, you know I, I I've been I've been enjoying the the virtual the virtual slowdowns. Yeah, I I've been enjoying it too. I and I think it's not even that it's virtual. It's just tis the season of the 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 bracket. Yeah. Of the of the who's gonna who's gonna make it out of this. Um, this what is this called why am i blanking on it the um let's see because we've got the inner geek them we've got the um, yeah but uh, what what is it <laughs> oh tournaments oh tournament, my yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's thirsty it's been a while since we recorded on a thursday <laughs> fyi during the pre-show we were talking about how our jobs are draining our lives so yes we will blank on words like tournament of all things <laughs> It happens. It happens. No, Every, everyone I, adult is because everybody's probably feeling the same way. <laughs> yeah. No, but it's a good time if you've never checked out the Schmo Down. Highly recommended. Yeah. The tournaments are the best parts of any season, and right now they've just kicked out singles. We're gonna start um, seeing some of the teams. My my only thing is at this point, if you are not a Patreon member. You will get spoiled about matches outcomes if yeah. you watch SCN, which SCN, um, they had Kevin, Kevin Smith on, yeah. he, which do not go, th- go into that thinking, oh, this is going to be an interview. No, no. It is Kevin Smith just vamping for a, over almost two hours. It's yeah. just him talking and nobody else. <laughs> <laughs> Which I, have, I don't mind yeah. because I've never really liked Christian's interview style, but it was there were certain points when I was looking at the screen at everyone else's faces and I'm like, oh poor Brett. Oh Brett, I don't think said a single thing during it. Oh my wow. Wow. He actually wow, Brett could get a word in. Well yeah, Kevin Smith could talk because I know I'll, I'll even like uh, it, with his uh, fat man mm-hmm. and show uh, it's uh yeah, if if you can, if anybody else can get a word in, it, it, it's uh, you know pro- more power to you. But uh, I I haven't watched that particular episode of uh, SCN yet. I keep meaning to this week, but uh, but uh, you know just just because, just like you said, it, just, it's the, just wind them up and let them go. <laughs> it's a good one because he does talk about his time directing Flash and Supergirl, okay. and it's and and they don't spend too long on it. But um, it's it's something where I think it's a good enough piece where it goes back to our whole discussions about Stephen Amell's interviews and other CW actors coming out of those shows and talking about their experiences. Um, that kind of like the grind that is the CW machine at this point. Okay. Yeah. Well, I will. I will be, make a point to listen to it tomorrow uh, while I'm slogging away on whatever at work <laughs> well and speaking of cw i'm so glad there's this transition <laughs> yeah yeah i see what you um, did there supernatural is back in vancouver and starting production on their their legitimate final season the final seven episodes or a few episodes i don't even know how many that they're going to be shooting and that came out just just on the heels of one of the best announcements this week. You know, I just, the boys 
they do it right. They do. And they have announced that Jensen Ackles will be joining not the second season, but the third season as Soldier Boy. Yes. And I love I love Jensen's break into the news on his Instagram account as far mm-hmm. as yeah, that was just, that was just the, the, the best way to just drop drop something, you know, and 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 then it bring in the you know he pull, brings up the boys uh com- graphic novel and it just gives the facial expressions and stuff. It was just, it was just a very, it was just a very good, coy play. It it really captures the spirit of the boys in a lot of ways, okay. in, in that in that announcement. Yeah, I I think this is perfect. I mean, Eric Kripp, Kripke is behind the boys, mm-hmm. and he was behind Supernatural the first five seasons. So this, I I'm just my immediate thought was. I wonder what Jared Padalecki thinks. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure he's, he's really like, upset. Yeah. He's, <laughs> he's like, "Why the hell did I sign so quickly to Walker, Texas Ranger?" <laughs> no. <laughs> Me too. I want to be a boy. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe, 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 maybe shooting schedules will work out that he could do it. But, but then again, it's a CW, the the reboot for Walker. So again, you're, as you as you noted it. That uh, network is is notorious for the grind for what they put their actors through. So, yeah, and I also like that. Following the announcement, everyone comes out and gives their spiel about who Soldier Boy is in the books, and he's the first superhero in this world. He fought in World War Two. And he's a man out of time. Oh, who does that sound like? So. So we're we're getting our Marvel character and a Marvel character that, from what I understand, Jensen competed for playing. Of course, it went to Chris Evans, but but I just I like that idea that well now Jensen Ackles gets his turn, and and it's and it's also funny because yes he is a super he's a CW star. Mm-hmm. CW right now is primarily known for its DC comic book shows yeah and now he gets to go to the boys and mock them mock them all mock them all up <laughs> <laughs> it is, it, exactly exactly <laughs> what would have been better had the boys had a air an arrow version character that he oh, was able yeah. to <laughs> yep <laughs> All right, so there's no clear segues into the next topic, but um, so I'm just going to announce it. The Crown season four is set to drop on Netflix on November 15th. Love the Crown. Looking forward to the fourth season, um, and and that's all I can really say. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, I think the big thing, and especially in the when the news dropped today about season four, the uh, the teaser that netflix shared was a lot of diana so we're so we are we are getting we're getting to to more current you know more present day and Mm -hmm. and of course and of course really the i mean obviously the british press has always been very tabloid handling of the uh, of the royal family but we really you know obviously with charles and diana that's when things really just blew up as far as the I think the Royals, uh, at least for our generations and as and, and present day, uh, how how we how we think about the royal family. Uh, at least that's when I think about the royal family. That's honestly the first thing that pops in my head is Charles and Diana. Oh yeah, absolutely. I think I think that it. it I haven't seen the teaser, um, but this is the part where. Everyone really wants to see Diana, and if they're gonna, they're gonna include her. You gotta go full full steam ahead because um, she almost eclipses Elizabeth, uh, Queen Elizabeth, in that way where um, everyone of our generation knows Princess Diana and associates that story with the royals, and it's and it's going to be interesting because um i'm sure that there there 
it, the crown, they not only are telling the story, but they do it in such a good way. And one of my favorite episodes from the most recent season is the one about Prince Charles, solely <laughs> about him. And, and I just, I just, um, I hope there's a solid episode like that because I also think this is an ensemble cla class. So all characters should, should be shown, but we'll see. Yeah. I don't really know where I was going with that, but yeah, the crown season four drops on November 15th. Stranger things will continue beyond season four. Duh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They had a, <laughs> the Duffer brothers had an interview this week in uh, deadline where they did talk about uh, season four. For of course, obviously having to take a break because of the pandemic, but but also I think it gave them uh, opportunities to to really. They always have things. Obviously, show, many times showrunners will have things mapped out, but they talk about how having the break gave them an opportunity to really think through. Like, okay, we do have a clear end in sight, but but it's def but it's not going to be season four, and and so they uh, are making adjustments to their you to their subsequent seasons. Do part of those adjustments include not just reusing the same villain time after time after time? Uh, I think they are going to try to do that. Yeah, <laughs> I think they, that was one of the things they've learned from having a time to reflect. <laughs> is, uh, I mean, to, I love yeah. season three. I really yeah. do. I, yeah. I, I like season three because those characters and um, the stories that all of their adventures in season three worked really well. Season one, right up there. Season two is where it got a little iffy. Yeah. yeah. But, but I do, I'm, I'm glad that they're using the time wisely to really yeah. think this through because they set themselves up for high precedence. So they got to deliver. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, and I think they, they did touch on that uh, with, how season three ended spoiler alert uh with uh uh the sheriff ending up in russia and and how they're going to you know, use that to introduce more of that element into the story new villains and, and again they're very cognizant of just not retelling the same story over and over again so yeah, yeah. so he, he i think ends we'll, up in russia and ends up in a black widow movie go figure it's all it's, did <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Black Widow, we, we will never see. <laughs> yeah. we, we'll see it on Disney Plus <laughs> at, at for forty nine dollars. Please, I'll talk for a normal fee. <laughs> Please, because I, I am, I have to tell you, Will, I am fully preparing myself to get spoiled for, by Tenet. I'm just. Tenet, there's there I'm gonna get spoiled. I'm not gonna have the experience that I always crave to have with Christopher Nolan films and I'm and I'm preparing myself for that. I am too. I'm I am not too. preparing myself for for Black Widow spoilers or any of the MCU things because please just drop it on Disney Plus. I will pay. <laughs> I will pay an extra thirty dollars on top yeah. of the subscription for a Black Widow movie at this point. <laughs> I would too, actually. <laughs> I would too, uh, which is which is funny. A few months ago, I probably would have been like, "Yeah," but now it's getting to that point of ridiculousness where, yeah, I'm I, 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 I need I'm, I'm miss missing my MCU content, mm -hmm. and uh, I, 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 I we need it now. So if they if they it, it, at this point, it would not surprise me if they drop it you know maybe before mandalorian or 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 maybe after mandalorian just to, to you know to give that show some space uh in in the fall but uh yeah but you, you're but you're right about ten and especially given that they're releasing it internationally here uh i think in the next next week and mm -hmm. and, I've, and i'm also seeing that it might also be releasing some select U.S. markets in the few states that are that have movie theaters open. So, yeah. so yeah. I, I unfortunately, I, I'm like you that uh, I I'm ready for the pirated copies to to make their way onto the internet. Yeah, and I don't see. I don't even think I'm gonna be tempted to look at those because I know it's not gonna be. It's gonna be a crummy coffee <laughs> yeah exactly exactly so I, I just i give up 
spoil me all you want. Tell me what happens. You, I, I'd rather just rip off the bandaid, get it over with, and then, and then maybe if going into it, it yes, it won't be the experience that I usually love with his films, but at the same time, it'll it'll be interesting now that I know what happens. How will I respond to the storytelling as a whole? You know. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good um, point. That's a good point. I, it just remi- kind of funny, which is another podcast I follow. They just did a whole in review of all of Christopher Nolan movies, mm-hmm. minus the Batman movies. And um, they were talking about Inception and Interstellar and how knowing how it changes when you rewatch those movies, because during the initial viewing it's all about that experience and the oh why did he end it there and looking back and everything and now rewatching it that how that does kind of shift your experience or your takeaway or your enjoyment of the overall story um so so i don't know like i said fully preparing will full preparation (laughs) (laughs) i've thought about this (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I think we all have us. Yeah, I even yeah, I think even Varadhi used someone this week, and I know I put on our on our uh, on our socials channel about uh, uh, with the option of being able, you know, waiting a few mm-hmm. weeks or months to uh, see a film in a movie theater, or or just having it release on the video on demand at home, and 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 I think if I recall the Variety poll, I think you know folks. Where it was earlier in the week, but I think it was a situation where, depending on the length of time, some people were okay with you know seeing it at home if, if the theater elect if the studio elected to to uh, to do that. I know with our with our poll online, I think about two thirds of the folks who, who responded uh, definitely wanted the movie theater experience. So, I, I, yeah, but I also think that that's thinking at it as like, oh, do you want this or do you want this? Well, I want I want this. But my mindset, I, I was one of the people, and I'm like, at home. Yeah. Be, not because it's my preference, but because realistic in the time that we are right now, I'll get it sooner. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm just ready. I, yeah, <laughs> give it to me now. I, I'm, I'm okay with not having the movie theater experience just to be able to experience, like you said, Tenet, Unspoiled, and or Black Widow, Unspoiled, and and, and if I have to pay a little premium for right now, uh, you know, as we talked about last week with Mulan, um, I'm okay with that uh, because it still will be cheaper than, you know, hauling four people to a movie theater mm-hmm. at that point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Still cheaper. And then you know what? You don't have to pay to watch it again. Exactly. <laughs> so still cheaper, but. Yeah. Anyways, moving on to more news this week. Um <laughs> You Speaking know, of when I yeah. think that that we cover everything on this show, Sony drops news. Um, they've dropped dropped two pieces of news. I'm going to lead with the um, the the lesser of the two evils, if you will. Okay. Um, Sony has announced that J.C. Chandor is named as the director of Craven the Hunter, a movie that. People want to watch. <laughs> yeah, they're building their Spider Verse over there. I mean, they've got Craven. They they they're, they're doing Carnage and the Venom. So they're like, you know, they're they are reminding everyone that we still have the rights to Spider Man, Disney, Marvel, and we're going to have our Marvel Cinematic. Well, what's this? Was what's it the Sony? What I can't remember what they call their version of the Marvel Universe, but. <laughs> Spider-Verse. Yeah, but this is called the Spider-Verse. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, which which is interesting because they are also not pushing to remind us that, FYI, this summer you were supposed to have already seen Morbius. Yep, that's right. That's right, we were. Another Spider-Man character. You know, you're, you're right. But I also think what Sony doesn't realize they're doing is they're also setting up this whole um, Sinister Six type environment where they're able to do that and then tom holland will turn around and say you have to pay me robert downey jr type money for me Mm -hmm. to do that movie Mm -hmm. because no 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 this isn't and we'll get to batman soon but this isn't a batman scenario tom holland is peter parker right now yeah 
And and that if you do a sinner sir sex without him, I I don't I think there will be anger. <laughs> yeah, there will be. <laughs> <laughs> there will be riots. <laughs> yep. <laughs> It'll make tenant look like <laughs> look like a little little drop in the ocean. <laughs> yep. Tenant doesn't matter dressed up. <laughs> you know, fandom will, you, you talk about a revolt, it will be, you know, there will be mass anger and, and, and geekdom if that happens. Yeah, I I just, I just, I just, knowing Sony, they mm. tend to do this. They put all of their eggs in one basket and yep. they, they never are able to fully deliver. Um, so yeah. that's, well, I guess just, that's just why. Yeah, I guess they're hoping to capture. It. They're trying to, I think, try to capture that lightning in the bottle that they were able to with uh, into the Spider Verse animated film. And but that was just, you know, I watched it again not so long ago, and that that was just a truly special film that only comes around so often. And 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 every, you know, Lord and, and and Miller really did a phenomenal job with that film, and you just can't like just replicate that. No, no. And, no. and, and that's, that's Miles' story. Yeah. I mean, yes, that's Into the Spider-Verse. That is, there, we, we get all of these different versions of Spider-Man who comic book readers know and, and recognize. But at the same time, at the heart of it, and why the story itself works, is because we all, at the end of the day, go back to Miles. Exactly. And it's his coming-of-age story. So... And I'm not, we're not saying that's nothing against what Sony, Sony Marvel is, are doing with Peter Parker, because those movies are also really well loved, really well acclaimed, not just for their associated association with the Avengers, but also just telling the story about Peter in high school and getting to know his coming of age for his own abilities. Um, It's just. It's just hard to think about Spider-Man without T- Tom Holland at this point. And really um, he, he's far too young to retire. That's all yep. I'm saying. That's all yep. I'm saying. But on top of that, we, I, and I was happy about this news. Um, Olivia Wilde has been tapped to direct a Sony Marvel film character. Now, we don't know who the character is. But... It's Spider Woman. <laughs> yeah, it I loved her tweet too because the news dropped, and yeah, you know, she has has a uh, has a little spider in the tweet. And then, of course, her next her next tweet was all the questions that I'm getting about my this project. And she has like a gif of uh, uh, someone having like a sock in her mouth, like I can't talk, I can't talk. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. I I've seen Book Smart. And, um, it, she's good. She's good at telling that, that story about, um, coming of age movies. So, I mean, I don't know much about Spider-Woman. I don't know where, where she is. I do know that the character is best friends with Captain Marvel. I believe so. I believe so. And I know there's like been various versions. I mean, I, this is one area of the Marvel universe i i do have a blind spot on as well so uh beyond just what i've read and uh some of the deadline articles and others about the, what about this project uh i think there's yeah the character the most i think the most recent character is jessica drew as far as uh who spider woman is and 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 all but uh but yeah you're right i mean with olivia being named as to direct this quote this unnamed project but we know a spider woman uh they're also bringing in a, a, another uh, writing crew and other things as well to, to to basically scrap the uh original um intents for this project and 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 you know start from start from scratch with a new voice to to to, to, to capture capture what division that that olivia probably will, will bring to bring to the character yeah yeah Looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. Um, 
Into the Spiders Verse proved us there can never be too many spiders. Well, unless they're in my bedroom. Exactly. <laughs> um, Warner Media is looking into hostile work environment. <laughs> yeah, so I know we I haven't talked. I don't talk- know why I chuckle at that. Probably because I, I, while I was reading it, I was reading it. I didn't read it before I read it. <laughs> I was thinking you were thinking about something that works since you do HR, but no, this goes into the whole, it, I, we haven't really talked about it much on this show, but, yeah. but uh, with Ray Fisher and his experiences during the justice league reshoot with, uh, with Josh, what Josh Whedon and, uh, and, um, and apparently things, I think it all got first kicked off earlier this summer where he sent where Ray farmer, uh, Fisher, excuse me, Ray Fisher uh, sent out a tweet saying he retracted everything he said about Josh Whedon and he had the uh, Comic Con panel where they talked, where they were you know, coming in and praising Josh for, for stepping in after you know after the tragic circumstances of Zach leaving the leaving the project, and so uh, more has come out and. Ray has been very vocal about mm-hmm. uh, what's trans what transpired on the set, in particular with Jeff Johns and John Berg and other apparently other people as well. And so, uh, yeah, so Warner today uh, said that they were uh, going to going to look into these allegations, and, and they haven't they haven't prejudged anything, but uh, but there apparently is enough smoke there that. They're they're going to look, take a look at this, and and quite frankly, they have to because I mean this is just you know years ago you could probably get a studios could get away with this kind of stuff, but you just can't at this point when when actors are are uh, especially actors uh, you know bring bring these types of allegations up. I mean, you just look at what happened on the Ellen Show too uh, recently. Uh, so yeah. um, so I think you know, so they they're definitely not sweeping this under the rug. Yeah. Uh, when was Justice League released? It was, uh, t- oh gosh, around 2017, I want to say. Yeah. Yeah. So what, they were mainly in production 2016. So, you know, four years later. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah guys, g- way to be responsive. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I well, you know. I, I, I think, I, I think yeah. it's also interesting that they, that how this has transpired following the whole release of Snyder Cut and this weekend we'll be talking a lot about the Snyder Cut because it's a big part of DC fandom and and so they're gonna um they're gonna be really honest if I I don't think I don't think that they will have any problem um providing problem really really identifying joss whedon's behavior and and making it clear this is what was found this is how we're handling it because now they can just say yeah and so you can just forget about his cut it's all about Mm. cut. and i wonder if this whole situation would have transpired differently had there never been a snyder cut or the announced that they will be making a snyder cut yeah, you, yeah, because you know, because Ray has been very, very outspoken, and, and Zach has as well um, about his career, and 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 so yeah, I think you're right. I mean, I think that that definitely precipitated some of this uh, as well. Uh, and another thing, interesting thing too that I, that I'm curious to see is how Jeff Johns will come out of all this because he is behind. You know, executive producer of many shows in, in DC, very senior person in in the DC Empire at, at Warner. So um, I again, I, I'm very curious to see you know what role he played and in, in, in all of this and how you know what ramifications will come out of the investigation if they do find evidence of wrongdoing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, they, they will, um, release their cut and then we'll see five other cuts mm-hmm. in the incoming years because they're going to, they're just milking this. I mean, justice, justice league didn't do well. 
It didn't do what it could have done, but boy, no. are we still talking about it. <laughs> exactly. <later. laughs> yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I, Avengers 2, um, not, not one of the most loved Marvel movies. Never talking about it as long as we've talked about Justice League. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't. <laughs> Oh my we God. have uh, Avengers two. Well, well, now, which now, which one was that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, granted, I mean, yeah, we we, we can um, throw as much shade as we want on Justice League, but at least the movie's been made. Man, when are we going to stop talking about the standalone Flash movie? Still hasn't been made. Yeah, so many different announcements. Yeah, let's see. It's been through what? Three, four directors, I think, what, two, three writing teams, and then today, well, somehow Ezra Miller, speaking of, like, the controversies and stuff, somehow Ezra Miller has been able to weather the the choking incident in Iceland, uh, and, and, and not only that, we get news that Ben Affleck is coming back one last time to play the Batman. Well... Yeah, because they're going to do Crisis, or they're going to do a version of Crisis. Yeah, they're going to do a version of Crisis. Yeah. They're going to screw Crisis up once and for all. Well, it's not going to be Crisis. It's actually it's a version of Flashpoint, but but they're I mean, going to they're going to yeah, but <laughs> they're yeah, but they're going to but it will be like elements of 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 the multiverse uh, in in this film, and and so. Um, with Flashpoint, I, you know, I was thinking about this before before we recorded it, and especially given that, you know, a few weeks ago we got the news about Michael Keaton and Batman eighty nine being uh, being a part of this uh, being a part of this film that, you know, is and you know, it's, it's it's more like at this point I could make the film myself because I was thinking, well, you know, thinking about Flashpoint and the role that. You know, and, and that when Barry went back to, to stop the death of his mother, and calls the uh, different timeline, and we Batman ends up being Thomas Wayne. I'm thinking if maybe that, you know, Ben Affleck's Batman. Given that they we established that Barry in this universe and, and, and Bruce are working together in, in justice league. So I think, you know, obviously he'll be the Bruce prime. I'm thinking Batman 89 actually is going to step into the role of, of the Thomas Wayne character. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if they'll actually have, you know, but I mean, part of the whole thing with flashpoint is that especially if you've seen it or read the comic book version or watched the animated film, you know, there's that very touching moment where, um, when Barry restores the timeline, he, he he delivers a message from Thomas to, to Bruce. Mm-hmm. So, you know, so they, and they may still have, they still may have Thomas Wayne in there. I'm just trying to figure out how. No, they're going to do that. They're going to use Martha because it's all about Martha and that's. Uh, yes, true. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, 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 there you go. I think, yeah. No, I think, <laughs> you, I think you may have hit, hit something because that makes sense. If they're not going to have Thomas Wayne play Batman, if you use Batman 89, in the flashpoint universe that Barry creates, um, you could, yeah, you, you just, yeah, you're right. You just, you just have Martha survive and play some role in that, that universe. And she, she's the one that sends the letter back to, to Bruce. Yeah. They restored yeah. the universe. I think that that's, that's, that, that's a damn good theory, Sarah. Martha. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Martha. Well, Martha, make, Martha. Martha. But it does make sense in in if you with with what we with Batman v Superman with the with the universe that they have constructed for this it, with in the DCEU. I'm just saying I've seen enough of these this genre to tell you you can't have both mommy issues and daddy issues. It can only be one or the other. Never be both. Never be both. That's true. That's okay. True. So pick and choose, <laughs> and you know what. If if the whole reason why this this movie, um, this this flashpoint exists is because Barry runs back in time to save his, save his mom, his mom's gonna be named not Nora, but Mark. 
it's going to be called the Flash, the Martha verse. There you go. <laughs> Did I take it too far? I think I should have stopped myself. <laughs> I'll just let but you go. I just I, sometimes I get on these tangents and I just can't. I you know I I think a the only reason why we're seeing Affleck return is because they got Keaton. I don't think Affleck would have any interest in this without Keaton. Mm-hmm. I I also this this is gonna be this is gonna be interesting. Um, I still don't care. <laughs> <laughs> still do not care about this. And Will, every time you tell me about what actually is supposed to happen in Flashpoint, and I go into these things thinking that they're going to do that, they never do. And I never get that punch that as 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 well as what you describe. And so if they don't deliver that, I'm going to be disappointed. I also, it's it's really interesting that while we're getting news about this this Flash movie and all of these Batmans appearing in it, I just want the Batman at this yeah. point. I really, everything that's coming out about that movie, I'm just like, huh, oh, screw Tenet. I just want Batman. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I want to know what Reeves is doing. And and that's that's where the tie is. Man, everybody wants to know, is that tied into the Joker universe? Mm-hmm. Or is that tied into this crazy flashpoint? I don't know. But I I just I want that that next trilogy um and Matt Reeves to to see what he's gonna do because I do like his Planet of the Eight movies. So that's and and you know. They are expected to resume production next month. Thank yep. God. Yep. yep. Um, and yeah. we'll just go from there. And we have a logo and some fan fan art. And uh, what really got me excited for fandom is when I found out that they're going to interview Robert Pattinson. I'm like, mm-hmm. like, okay, I am going to actually watch this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I have to give it to them. They they definitely at first I was like when I saw the logo and stuff today, I was like, did they like like did they release this too soon? But then I was thinking, oh hell no. This is just like this is like the this is like the appetizer. Mm-hmm. And and I love that I love that new logo that they they that they dropped today. Uh, it's it was just it, it, you know, the reds, the blacks, the hues. I mean, it was just, just so dope. And I was just like, oh, yeah, I'm so, I'm so hyped for this weekend. Before, I was kind of like, eh. I mean, I was hyped for it because I'm a DC fan. You know that. Everyone knows that. Mm-hmm. But, but yeah, but this one now, I'm like, okay. I, I think, you know, after, especially after the letdown of Comic Con, uh, I think, and I think DC is on to something, especially given that, uh, that, uh, in addition to dropping this info, today uh earlier this week uh, i guess i guess it was just yesterday uh they announced that they were splitting the events dc fandom yeah. up into two into two days which i actually i'm glad they did because when i when i whenever i first logged into the uh the, 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 the fandom site and started like figuring out you know what times i was going to watch the content if i was going to try to catch it the first go around you know definitely try to catch it the first go around because you know social media is going to like spoil it so um he, he, i was like there's just no earth like, there's just no way and then of course right smartly they split it up to august to tomorrow this weekend and then the second half of it where all the tv shows uh yeah. will be on september the 12th so i was very happy with that uh, I, because- I think that when i first saw it i was and i saw who what they were going to show i was like now I understand why Comic Con failed. Yeah. <laughs> DC didn't show up. <laughs> Neither did Marvel, for that matter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hall H is not Hall H because oh, look at all these. We're talking to all these people. No, no. Hall H is for that prime time MCU DCEU. Here is your hero lineup, like the mainstay. The TV shows, too. And I'm glad. Thank you for the clarification that TV shows will be next month. Because I was wondering that. I was like, if it it was up to me, I would probably push them. Because they're, Lord only knows when they'll start shooting again. And and how that will all work. And boy, 
Do we have questions about the DC universe? That yeah. one. Yeah, the um, only TV, yeah the only TV shows that are going this weekend. Uh, there's the Flash panel, of course. Nice. And uh, Titans. Oh. Uh, interesting. I was <laughs> like, of all, yeah, I was like, of all, 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 the show, all the shows out of. I was like, I was looking forward to, I was looking forward to the Doom Patrol one this weekend, but then, yeah, but then I saw, yeah, they, they bumped, they bumped uh, all like Doom Patrol, Legends, uh, Black Lightning, Batwoman, uh, all of those will be on the um, what they're calling that weekend, the Explore the Multiverse weekend, uh, which is September the twelfth, and then this weekend is the Hall of Heroes. So uh, of course we have, obviously, it kicks off with Wonder Woman. Uh, they have uh, the fandom store, so they can so they can give you more of our money. Uh, they are doing some various gaming announcements. Uh, there's a multiverse panel. There's the Flash panel, which apparently Ezra Miller is supposed to be a part of that one with uh, Andy Machete. So uh, I, I doubt they'll get into they'll, they'll get into the incident, but who knows? Maybe they will. Um, and then of course Suicide Squad. Uh, there's a, a blurred. Um, what do you mean, of course, Suicide Squad? What do you mean? <laughs> well, okay, I have, I still haven't watched the first one, so <laughs> I know I, me and you both. <laughs> yeah, so, so I was kind of like, well, you know, it's James Gunn, yeah. and yeah, and I know, I know, I, know, I, I will freely admit I'm reading, I'm looking at the looking at the schedule as as we talk, so I don't miss anything. Of, of try not to miss anything of note. Of course, there's the big surprise DC Comics panel. So I know there's a couple places where, you know, Henry Cavill could show up. That could be one of them. Could be the Snyder Cut. Could be Shazam, too. I mean, because we did have the cameo. Uh, I don't know. I don't yeah. know. If Henry Cavill is there, I don't want to hear about Superman. I want to hear about the next season of The Witcher. Yeah. <laughs> I still think about that show every now and then, you know? It, it it's a real it's one that if you haven't watched it and you're looking for a covid binge go watch the witcher i i really think it's it's pretty genius in the, the what they do with that universe and and honestly i don't want to talk about henry cavill will he or will he won't be superman which where's the announcement about him going into the flashpoint <laughs> At this point, yeah. You can't even give him a Flashpoint cameo. <laughs> Let's give him one. Let's give him one. <laughs> oh, man. They brought yeah. Cupid back, but nope. Henry, we don't have the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he may show up. Though. Uh, but I, I, I'm just trying to think of the logical places where it could show up. I mean, the obvious one is the Justice League panel. But... Uh, yeah, but it, it could it could also be the surprise panel, or hell, or Shazam, because of like I said, the cameo, or even Black Adam. Who knows? They may even just say, "Oh, what the hell? What the hell with? It? We'll just have him show up with the rock." Talk about talk about like how much testosterone you get in one like screen. <laughs> I don't. Well, but how much I mean, you get in one screen? <laughs> I mean, the rock is is gonna just dominate if if he thinks he had a hard time getting any spotlight when he was in press conferences with Ben Affleck and Gil, Gal Gadot, then no, you ain't going to get any time with The Rock. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, was, I was just, yeah, I was, I was but, no, nah, The Rock is just a stand, that's just, the Black Adam panel is just going to be about The Rock, and that's, that's, and that's how it should be, because it's The Rock. But, uh, yeah, um, and then there's the Aquaman to, uh, you know, I, even though Jason Momoa is not publicly slated to come i still have a sneaky suspicion he's going to show up in that panel yeah that's weird that's weird i've noticed that every now and then i'll see these various streaming events and the cast of this and that and i'll and i'll always be looking i'm like who did they have they don't have the main person not gonna watch (laughs) 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 if you don't have the main character what the heck are you doing? That's, yeah. that's the whole purpose. And and the ones where the full cast is actually there, the full cast, those panels are great. There's nothing wrong with them. It it they, they're often it is at the very at the very least it is hilarious to watch the moderators mon- moderators because they do not know how to do this 
via Zoom. <laughs> you really don't. <laughs> the only one that worked, from thinking back to Comic Con, really was the, the boys one. I think oh, that yeah. that one was a good one. And mm-hmm. and even though you know I don't care to see the film, I think New Mutants also was a good one. But the rest of them, like you know, the Star Trek one, I, I'm still pissed off about that one from Comic Con. Yeah. Uh, I thought that was still. Conf- I, I was like, damn, I just wasted like an hour of my day just watching right. this for a yeah, table. Yeah, watch, yeah. Watching a table read, really. But anyway. But uh, and I and I also think the actors are kind of like, what are we doing? This is really awkward. Do I say something? I actually, it's it doesn't feel as authentic as just being together on stage, yeah. riffing off of each other. And I get it, yeah. but um, I I as big of the disappointed appointment, DC tends to be for me. Mm-hmm. I have a feeling they're gonna do this right this weekend and in September and they're going to make up for that disaster that was comic con. I don't even know if we should call it that because that was, that was not comic con. That was not comic con. That was, that was. And I do comic con at home every year. Yeah, I do too. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I just, yeah. With, like I said, with with this, because with the DC fandom, of course, all the, you, uh, you have to go to the, uh, DC fandom website, log in, set up an easy, ca- set up an account, super easy. They have, you, you can, you know, it's totally where if, if you're going to, you know, can't wait to see things, you have a good schedule. You can do a, you know, you can even like send things to your Google calendar so you don't miss it. Uh, but, but also the good thing is um, if you, if, if you do have a conflict, uh, they are going to replay the panels uh, two additional times over the course of the weekend. So, uh, but of course, the the only thing about that is you'll probably get. You know, it, but it'll be. But you know, Sarah, to your point, it would be like the Comic Con experience where, you know, things just drop, and if there is big news that comes out of these panels, uh, which are, uh, you know, run from anywhere from as short as fifteen minutes to as long as forty minutes, um, then, you know, it, it will maybe get that virtual Comic Con experience because, I mean, I have to give DC credit. I mean, hell, they. I even saw a Jake from State Farm ad <laughs> today as far as talking about DC fandom on, on Twitter. It was the most random thing, but I was like, man, they're like really marketing to this thing like crazy. And, and it, it, it built up the hype for it. Yep. Yep. All right. Well, I, I think that's it. Yeah, right. I think, I think so. I think so. We'll just, uh, yeah, just, to stand by to hear our reactions for for all the all the all the goodness that's going to come out of the DC universe this weekend. Yeah, and Will, where can our listeners find you? Yes, you can find me at Will M. Polk. That's W I L L M P O L K. And you can find me at S J Belmont. S J B E L M O N T. Please follow our crew on Twitter at Seen and Nerd. Friend us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram. But most importantly, rate, subscribe, and comment on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. Good night, geek out. You're welcome.